When you have four of the main indicators, employment, production, new orders, uh, all under the level of 40. These are readings that we did not see unless we're talking about deep and prolonged recessions. The Fed's going to continue to be higher for longer into recession and that the economy is going to have to work that weight off going forward, which could indeed prolong the depth and the length uh, and the duration of the current recession. The U.S. economy is already in a downturn, and it could be following in the footsteps of China as the government assumes a growing amount of debt to prop up growth, Danielle DiMartino Booth, a veteran forecaster, says. The chief strategist of QI Research has said for months that the U.S. economy is already in a recession despite Wall Street's upbeat outlook for a soft landing. For several quarters, fears of the U.S. economy slipping into recession have persisted, with attention focused on the Federal Reserve's monetary policy decisions. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon says he's hopeful the Federal Reserve can bring down inflation without causing a recession but wouldn't rule out more troubling possibilities, such as stagflation. According to Danielle, the present economic indicators, encompassing employment, production, and new orders, all dipping below the crucial threshold of 40, signal a severe and protracted recession. The employment landscape continues to stand firm compared to historical norms. March saw the addition of a robust 303,000 jobs to the economy, surpassing expectations, while the unemployment rate lingered near its record low. However, there was a slight downward revision in new payrolls for February, which now sit at 270,000. Additionally, there has been a gradual uptick in layoffs and unemployment over recent months, with total discharges reaching 1.7 million in February, as reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Other economists also foresee a weaker labor market, which raises the risk of a recession. Danielle suggests that the economy might require a significant amount of time to bounce back from these obstacles, which could extend the severity and duration of the current recession. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. I, I said months ago to you that it looked like the U.S. economy had, had entered recession in October of 2023. Given the revisions that we have on hand, given how very weak industrial production has been, given what the revisions say to uh, uh, personal income minus government transfers. I'm referring to a bunch of National Bureau of Economic Research markers to date recessions. Given what we're seeing, it's looking increasingly like the U.S. has indeed entered recession. Now, these are things that take a very long time to pan out. We did not know until uh, July of 2009 that the first quarter of 2008 was a negative GDP print. So think about how long it took to get from April 2008 before the Bureau of Economic Analysis went and said, okay, 2008 first quarter, 0.6% GDP with a plus sign in front of it. By July of the following year, that's a long time in between, the BEA had reduced that to saying, oh my gosh, wait a minute, it was negative 0.7% in Q1 of 2008. And it was November 28th of 2008, December the 1st, they announced, hey, the recession is backdated to December 2007. That's when we saw non-farm payrolls peak at a level. So it took them 366 days total to make the determination longer than any modern day recession. But indeed, after 366 days, they said, looking back, December 2007. So there's nothing off script that I'm describing that could cause the, the same National Bureau of Economic Research to look back at revisions that continue to come in and the fact that those revisions take down income, take down retail spending capacity, take down consumption capacity. When you have four of the main indicators, employment, production, new orders, uh, all under the level of 40, these are readings that we did not see unless we're talking about deep and prolonged recessions. So you, you couldn't use the recession of 2001 or the recession of 1990, 91. You couldn't use those as benchmarks because never during those recessions did you see all four of the indicators in the industrial heartland, in the cyclical uh, epicenter of the United States, all go under 40, not under 50, 
that that denotes the, the the line between expansion and contraction, but under 40 deep recessionary readings. And that tells me because the Fed is still higher for longer. All they've promised to do is to reduce the pace of Treasury roll off. They haven't said we're lowering interest rates yet. That means that the Fed's going to continue to be higher for longer into recession and that the economy is going to have to work that weight off going forward, which could indeed prolong the depth and the length uh, and the duration of the current recession. Danielle outlined three potential scenarios that could prompt the Fed to adjust its rate trajectory in the future. One scenario involves a resurgence of inflation alongside a strengthening job market, which would likely remove the possibility of rate cuts entirely. The U.S. job market is humming along, and there are signs this may continue for the rest of the year, even if the pace moderates. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said Wednesday that the central bank was keeping an eye on the job market, which has so far shown resiliency in the face of monetary policy tightening. We're also prepared to respond to an unexpected weakening in the labor market, Powell said. He noted the central bank's dual mandate, which includes both stable prices and maximum employment. Now let's redirect our attention to a video. He laid out three different scenarios that would cause the Fed to change its, its, its rate path uh, presumptions going forward. One of them was inflation takes off all over again, and presumably uh, the employment, uh, the, the job market strengthens further, and that would really take rate cuts off the table, period. But the third one that he mentioned is that if, uh, is, if the labor market unexpectedly weakens, and when he says unexpectedly weakens, we have to bear in mind that in the December dot plot, that unexpected weakness would have applied to an unemployment rate that had risen to 4.1%. But that was changed in the March dot plot to 4.0%. So unexpectedly now is triggered by the unemployment rate moving from 3.829% to split hairs to 39 Four five percent, which rounds up to four point zero percent, as engaging the Fed, putting the Fed into into kind of a launch mode, and I, we we have to be very cognizant of that because the unemployment rate unexpectedly fell in the most recent uh, data that we had, and he's saying it could easily also unexpectedly rise. So again, I I'd be leaning a lot closer to two, simply because we've seen negative revisions show that the actual job losses in the U.S. economy started sometime in the third quarter of 2023. When you talk about the National Bureau of Economic Research, trust me when I say they pay attention to these revisions because these revisions are created by statisticians and PhDs just like them. Uh, and, and, and it was, you know, what was fascinating, Jack, was there's been so much focus on the employment cost index because Alan Greenspan put it on the map. He described it as being his fallback, his favorite inflation indicator, and Jay Powell kicked it to the curb with metal cleats at the podium. He said, we're going to follow price inflation, not wage inflation. And he also nodded to the fact that they have to try and decipher what the private sector is doing compared to the government sector. Why did he do that? He did that because government wages and salaries have kicked up to the highest level in 25 years. In addition to that, that union wages have gone up to, I think they were 6.3% in the first quarter. When you pull back what happened with unions last year and all of, of the concessions that they were able to, to negotiate, and when you pull back what's happening with government, um, state and local wages, all of a sudden, you're talking about the rest of the, the private sector that's now seeing wage gains that are lower than 4% and coming down. The economy could enter a hard landing by the end of the year and cause the unemployment rate to surge to 5%, David Rosenberg, a top economist, recently said. Despite Wall Street's optimism for a soft landing, Danielle has persistently warned of a looming recession. Key economic indicators, such as employment, production, and new orders, have dipped below critical thresholds signaling a severe and prolonged recession. How do financial markets typically react to the onset of a recession, and what strategies can investors use to protect their assets during these periods? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up, and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.